Novak Djokovic has touched down in Tokyo, and he tested out that left shoulder with a couple of sumo wrestlers, and now he's winning in straight sets. He's back, baby. You know who else is back? Andy Murray with his best win since 2017, his best win since the major hip operation, and he is in the mood for the fall season because he is sporting here, and you see, you see it in this picture, the very fashionable neck beard. It's back in fashion, and Andy Murray has it first. Work on yours as soon as possible. Uh, Steph Sitsipas, the five-match losing streak, it's over. Sasha Zverev, new mojo. He's got a win, too, over Francis Tiafo. Did Roger and Rafa make all the difference with their Labor Cup coaching? Plus, a French tournament director says the Labor Cup is not real tennis. It's only business. Kyrgios gets a fake suspension. Federer gets blamed for Germany's Davis Cup roster. And a little tiny bit more on today's episode of Coffee Break Tennis. <laughs> What an intro. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the Coffee Break Tennis Podcast. We're doing something special, something new today. Uh, the first half of the show will be on YouTube for all of the people. Alla Leute, das Publikum. And the second half of the show will only be for our very special patron saints. Those are the members of Team Coffee Break Tennis. Hey, if you're not a member, feel free to go to patreon.com forward slash coffee break tennis right away. So let's get right into today's show. Uh, Novak Djokovic is back, and uh, some people uh, a little suspicious. Let's take a look at this comment from my Instagram account. Field Oliver comments, interesting how Novak was injured in the U.S., which he did make out to be quite serious. Then he goes back to the tour a week before he generally does, right? Adding Tokyo, that's something new. Now, the reason why. Novak, remember last time he played the Olympics, which was, didn't freaking Andy Murray? Andy Murray won that one over Del Potro. And remember when Novak Djokovic cried, and I think it was such a moment that some Joker haters might have been turned by uh, seeing the very real emotions coming from Novak Djokovic, just feeling so terrible that he wasn't able to, uh, this would be back in 2016, that he wouldn't be able to get that Olympic gold. So... He's really wanting it next year in Tokyo, so he made a point to come here and play. It could be more to do with that, but let's continue reading uh, Oliver Field's comment. Winning in Tokyo will give him a better chance to maintain number one. It's clear that he wants number one, is what he said before that. Why else did he come back one week early to the tour? Because normally he wouldn't be playing this time of year. And he had an injury, so this decision, decision really does not make much sense. It makes much sense if you look at it as uh, he wants to hold on to number one desperately. I don't think it's so much that. I think he does want to hold on to number one, so that helps. But that's just a little gravy. The main thing here is he wants to uh, go play in Tokyo and have that experience. That's why he's talking about in the press saying, well, when I come here next year for the Olympics, it's going to be even hotter and more humid than it is now. But I'm still getting a feel for the conditions out here is uh, the gist of what Djokovic was saying. So there you go, uh, that interesting theory there, but I think it's more to do with his uh, getting uh, some experience here for next year's Olympics. Novak Djokovic, let's take a look at the stats over Popeye from Australia. Uh, 30 winners on top of 12 unforced errors. Now, the funny thing about this match, to me, I watched this whole match, as I do. That's one of the things we do here at Coffee Break Tennis. We watch the matches you don't want to watch. Although, this was a fun match, and um, you know Novak Djokovic is uh, usually pretty fun to watch. Maybe not as, as exciting as watching Roger Federer. But watching Djokovic, I enjoy it. And it was a good match today, but you didn't see the typical um, super returner Djokovic here. He kind of struggled. In fact, take a look at the other uh, stat sheet here. Uh, three for 12 on break points for uh, Novak Djokovic. He had plenty of great moments. Uh, I think of one game in the first set, I think it was, where this match felt a lot like Djokovic was holding fairly easily. Saw a match like this with Tsitsipas today, too. Holding fairly easily, and then getting in return games, just not able to uh, to do it. I think of this one game in particular where Djokovic lit up these two forehand winners, the first two points that go up 30, love 30 on Popeye's serve right away. And uh, and then he had a, a couple like ugly, unforced errors on the forehand side in that very same game. Looked a little frustrated at times. Overall, Djokovic does look healthy to me, and he's playing great, and he was serving very well. You see seven aces on two double faults. That doesn't look spectacular, but for Djokovic, I mean, Popeye's got a pretty big serve. He's only got eight aces compared to Joker's seven, and I, I'm pretty sure Djokovic hit both of those double faults in the very last game of the match when he was serving uh, for the match. So, 
Uh, there's that. Let's go back to the other stat. Oh, win percentages. I mean, you can't argue of winning 84% on first and 63 on second. It, it was serving 63 in. I mean, it was it was a great serving day from Djokovic, and uh, that's always a good sign for the Joker. And you know the rest is going to get better and better as he plays more matches. Uh, overall for the match, net points 15-21. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, total points one. Yeah, that, that looks like a beatdown when you look at the total points one. Uh, let's see what Djokovic says here. I got um. Let's see what Djokovic said about the shoulder after the match. This is uh, reported in Golf Today. Dot AE. I have not felt anything in previous days, including today on match. So I'm very pleased to say that I feel healthy. Said Novak Djokovic. So uh, Djokovic doesn't want anyone out there worrying about him. The serious injury with the shoulder. It looks like it's now a thing of the past. Now we shall see. When Djokovic plays uh, tougher opponents, let's take a look at the draw. Does he have tougher opponents coming, though? At an ATP 500, you might not count on that. Next up, he's got Go Soda. Go Soita, uh, Japanese wild card here. That's not going to be super tough. You never know. Uh, Yoshihito Nishioka, another Japanese player, or Luka Pui, would be in the quarterfinals for Djokovic. Uh, Djokovic semifinal. He could potentially face Marin Cilic, maybe. Who knows? Uh, Pablo Gorena Busta is back. Just won a tournament, PCB did. And uh, it's safe to say he's playing some of the best tennis he has in a while because he's not had the greatest year. Will he come through David Goffin? Maybe Djokovic could play him. El Chapo had a good run uh, this last tournament as well. Hyun Chung is winning. That's, uh, that's good for him. He hasn't done a lot of that in a couple years. And then Marin Cilic is there. And then who could potentially be your finalist? Well... <laughs> Taro Daniel, Taro Daniel took out uh, Baby Joker, born a Chorch. Jordan Thompson, the mustache, is around. We'll see what he can do. The Demon, the Demon, uh, he's moved up in the race lately. He's got a chance to go to the World Tour Finals at the O2 Arena in London, maybe. Manorino, of course, just had a great result. Uh, Radu Albato's around. Riley Opelka took out the Fritz. Jill Simone. Uh, this looks like Joker's going to win <laughs> the tournament. Uh, so, good pick from the Joker here. Not a lot of super tough competition. Of course, winning a tournament uh, on the ATP Tour, it's never easy for anyone. Djokovic will have to play well, but every indication so far that he will, in fact. The more interesting tournament to me, unless you're on Joker Watch, unless you're a big Joker face fan, uh, the China Open, ATP 500 in Beijing. Dominic Team, who looked pff, the best he's looked in a long time, uh, and his win over Richard Gasquet gave him a breadstick. Breadstick, 6 4 six, one. Uh, In that match, we all know how great the Gasquet backhand is. But to me, Dominic Team, I mean, he made him look like uh, your one-hander is not as good as mine in that match. Pretty uh, spectacular play from Dominic Team. One thing I will note is I uh, did a great job of, yeah, we're used to seeing Dominic Team way back, a little defensive with his play. But he was moving in uh, whenever he could to get tight on the baseline and uh, really uh, bring in the heavy firepower. That was an impressive match. Of course, Andy Murray's win over Berrettini is a pretty big deal. Winning him two tiebreakers. Murray's down a break in both of those sets. Murray had to save a couple of set points in the second set tiebreaker. The one thing that I took away from watching this match is, uh, you know, Berrettini, he's hot now, right? He had a good U.S. Open. Uh, I've been paying attention to him going back to the grass season. He made a lot of noise there. Of course, he did fall on his face at Wimbledon, backing up from a uh, Roger Federer slice. <laughs> but um, it's been good. And Murray just showed you how the experience and being patient, like when you're down a break, and, and just having a very high tennis IQ, a higher tennis IQ than Matteo Berrettini, there were a lot of cat and mouse points, as they say, in the second set tiebreak, and Murray won most of them. Uh, won most of the points in the first set tiebreak, too, winning 7-2. Okay, so Murray is through. Now the question for Murray, and we've got some comments here from Andy Murray. Uh, Murray said... Hopefully I can have a good run here. That was a good start for me, talking about beating Berrettini. I think I can play again tomorrow, so that'll be a good test. It's the first time I will have played high-level back-to-back days. See how I pull up after that one, but it's a bit of progress for me again this week, which is good. I feel like the progress has been quite consistent, and hopefully that keeps going through to the end of the year. He's talking about how fast he recovers. 
Uh, the, of course, the hip was always a question. Will it hold up? It looks like he can play a high level with the hip. He looks very good in this match. We all know Berrettini's been uh, a hot player lately, so that's an impressive win for Andy Murray, one of the most impressive in years. And if he can recover and play like that again tomorrow, he's got a chance. You know, he's got a chance to win tournaments again. Winning majors, it's hard to say that this early, but this if you are a big Murray fan, and you represent 1% of the tennis fans out there, and you know what, some people are going to be won over. Maybe he'll be 3% Andy Murray sometime next year. If you're a big Murray fan, this is a great sign that uh, Murray maybe could win another major. It's not impossible. It's still very unlikely looking to me. Uh, what else is going on in Beijing? So Dominic team, Andy Murray, that would be cool to see. That could happen in a couple days' time if we get a couple more wins from those guys. Uh, Cam Norrie stands the way of Murray. And uh, is a wild card from China is next up for Dominic team. Uh, Heron Hachinov is back. He's got a win over Pablo Cuevas. He will play as Jeremy Shardy. And then he could run into uh, Rublev, who took down Grigor Dimitrov, who was the only thing I remember from that match was uh, he missed a ton of first serves. Fabio Fonini is there. Who comes through here? I like Dominic team. I like Andy Murray, but... I don't know if he's going to recover and play his best. Maybe his next match. I think he can get through Cam Norrie. Can he keep going from there? I don't know. Uh, John Isner had a good win over Gail Monfils. Hasn't been a, a great summer for Isner. Of course, he came off the injury after losing in the finals of Miami to Roger Federer. Dirty Dan is up next for John Isner. I think that's a winnable match, although Isner will see how he bounces back coming through uh, three sets with Monfils. I'm sure it was pretty physical. I did not see that match, but the match I did see. We'll get Basil Ashvili and Steph Tsitsipas below there. Who will come through here? This is very interesting for me because I would love, we would all love to see Sasha Zverev and Tsitsipas. We'd love to see them doing well because they're next-gen stars, they're interesting, and we want to see them playing well enough to at least challenge the big three at the majors, perhaps. We also love to see them play because they don't like each other. Well documented. We won't go into it today's show, but just Google it. There's plenty of evidence that they don't like each other. Now, Tsitsipas was very impressive to me against uh, Dusan Lajevic, fellow Serb. Uh, let's bring up some stats on Tsitsipas. Uh, the first set, Tsitsipas loses. That's why it's such a good sign for me that Tsitsipas is back, baby, because uh, it's tough to lose your first set in best of three and have to win two in a row. And Tsitsipas, I saw him last week where he lost a fifth time. He had a five-match uh, losing streak. Where was he? Somewhere else in China. And it was very hot and humid. He got to take a look at the pictures. So Tsitsipas was saying he couldn't breathe in this match. Now, the commentators were saying, this was uh, against Adrian Manorino, who I, I believe went on to win this tournament or at least uh, get to the finals. Tsitsipas saying, I can't breathe. The commentators were saying, well, you know what? He just came from Labor Cup, came from Switzerland. Obviously, the weather's going to be a lot nicer in Switzerland. They have been playing indoors, too, so it's perfect. Uh, he's coming from Switzerland, going to a, a pretty humid week in China, and he can't breathe, and they're saying, you know, a big thing could just be, it's not even about fitness. It's just Tsitsipas just got here, so he hasn't had time to just practice in these conditions and kind of get his body used to uh, sweating so much. I guess you could they didn't say that, but that's pretty much what it comes down to with humidity. You're going to lose a lot of fluid. You're going to get pretty dehydrated. And Tsitsipas ends up quitting in this match. And, and the crazy thing is he's playing pretty well. It looked like the losing streak. And again, Manorino had a great run here. He wasn't playing bad at all. Tsitsipas looked like he could win in straight sets. Start of the third set, he said, I'm out. I can't win for sure. And three, maybe I could have pulled it out in the second set. He looked pretty rough. I thought, let's bring up what he said. Uh, a statement through Steph Tsitsipas. Explain the reasons behind his retirement at the end of the second set against Adrian Manorino from Tennis World, and uh, I don't have the rest of it. But basically, all he really said was, I couldn't breathe. And uh, I was thinking, you know, he better be sick, because you think of Roger Federer's record of he's never retired from a match. Well, like, Tsitsipas has already got a retirement right here. It, it's pretty early in the career. I feel like he could have finished that match. Maybe he wasn't, gonna fe he wasn't feeling good enough to win it, but I don't know. I, I felt like he could have finished it. Uh, I'm sure some other people out there were a little suspicious. And, and no bias here, because I really like Tsitsipas. I'd say he's my favorite of the next gen, although Sasha Zverev is growing on me. Uh, they both get such fun games to watch. Anyways, I thought that was interesting. And if I was critical of him at all, he made up for it big time with today's win. So he loses this first set. 
Went in a much higher percentage, 79 to 70 on first serve over Livich. But Livich is getting way more first serves in and doing way better on the second serve. Paz had a chance to break, unable to do so in that first set. And then look at the second set. Paz, man, his serve can be such a weapon. He, uh, he can do everything with his serve, and he's pretty good at hitting spots. Just imagine as he gets better, if he becomes more accurate with his spot serving. He's so deadly. His uh, forehand, his grip is eastern. Hits a pretty flat, very deadly uh, there as well. I love watching Paz, and he's so good at finishing at the net. I mean, when he has a forehand... He's always going inside in or up the line or inside out, putting you in a corner, covering the line at the net and getting you, uh, you know, so late to the ball that there's nowhere for you to go. There's no way you're going to pull that ball cross court and pass him. So he's constantly setting himself up with very easy or makeable uh, volleys, I guess you would say. Just good situations he puts himself in at the net constantly. A high quality ball that he goes in on most of the time. And he's got great hands up there. He's uh, able to execute very well. A lot of reasons to love Sitsipas. And watching him today against uh, Dusan Lajevic, again, it wasn't a terrible first set, but he wasn't taking care of business on the second serve and could have done better on the first. Second set, he rectifies that. Overall for the match, look at the numbers. A little worse, you know, 5% lagging in the second serve win percentage. But getting uh, 61%, that's the magic number for Roger Federer. Sitsipas game reminds you a lot of Roger Federer in many ways, not just the one-handed backhand. And 84% to 63 win on first serve. That is not going to work. Sitsipas ends up breaking three times with seven chances. Livich, uh, two out of three. Impressive win today from Steph Sitsipas. Let's talk about um, let's talk about Sasha Zverev a little bit, and then we'll get out of here for YouTube. And then we'll have the patron saints come in for the rest of the show. We're running out of time, but there is enough time to get to the rest of the stories I wanted to talk about today for the patron saints. Take a look at the stats on Sasha Zverev. The first thing I noticed in this match, one, it's a great win for Sasha Zverev. Two, you have to wonder, did it really affect him? You know, Dominic team, he played Labor Cup. It's not so much the same where Zverev, he had to play that final match and clinch it. Uh, he had Nadal and Federer. You know, obviously, we all rec remember what happened there. Take a listen if you don't remember. Conqueror, let's go. Every point you win and every point you lose. It doesn't matter. matter. No one negative face. Now, now, the problems that you don't ever see you won, it's always like, oh, I knew it. Oh, and I have to wonder if that had an effect here. He looked very uh, strong here. He has a new racket. Maybe that's giving him some confidence, too. And 10 aces on three double faults. The big problem for Sasha Zverev has been all the double faults and just not being able to trust the second serve at all. Well, he wins 63% on second serve here, 78 on first, gets 70% of first serves in. I mean, these are very strong numbers for Sasha Zverev, so who knows? He's got to play Felix Auger all day, Ali Asim up next. That would be embarrassing to lose to a very young next-gen guy when you've been the top next-gen guy. It's probably a part of why Sasha Zverev has been so down throughout this year. As you see Sitsipas kind of take the light away from him a little, the spotlight away a little bit, and just all the, the disappointing losses. You're the most talked about next-gen guy, and now you're really struggling. Hit the music because we're getting out of here for the YouTubers. Thanks for listening to the Coffee Break Tennis uh, podcast today. We will be back this weekend. Uh, if you want to hear the rest of today's show, of course, go to patreon.com forward slash coffee break tennis. See ya!